When at University College uh, Dublin last year, I debated atheistic cosmologist Sean Carroll, and Carroll was confronted by the implication of the second law of thermodynamics that the universe must be finite and must thus have been created. He responded that he was working on a repeal of the second law of thermodynamics. <laughs> this reminded me of T.S. Eliot's McCavity the Mystery Cat. McCavity, McCavity, there's no one like McCavity. He's broken every human law. He breaks the law of gravity. <laughs> the fact of entropy did not compel Carroll, as it certainly should have done, to find a more satisfactory route than the eternal existence of the universe. He preferred utterly unsupported speculation. Non-Christian cosmologists have also appealed to the notion of the multiverse, arguing that our universe may be only one of many and that other universes may obey totally different uh, and thus presumably, uh, totally different laws and thus presumably not be subject to the second law of thermodynamics or its equivalent and therefore not to need a creator. However, multiverses are pure speculation. Even if such universes existed, for which there is not a shred of evidence, their laws would either be the same as ours or if not, we would be incapable of comprehending them anyway. And there would need to be a multiverse generator to account for all of them, which again would need to be governed by our physical laws, or if not, be entirely incomprehensible to us, and therefore a nonsensical subject of discussion. The late atheist turned deist, Anthony Flew, put it this way, the multiverse speculations are little more than, quote, escape routes to preserve the non-theist status quo. One is reminded of what physicist Wolfgang Pauli wrote in the margin of a colleague's paper. This isn't right. It isn't even wrong. <laughs> and uh, you may be interested to know that Stephen uh, Hawking uh, has just come out in favor of the multiverse uh, in his latest book, The Grand Design, and he argues that as a result of multiverse uh, uh, understanding, the universe does not require the intervention of some supernatural being or god. Uh, the argument goes like this. <laughs> of all possible universes, some must have laws that allow the appearance of life. The fact that we are here already tells us that we are in that corner of the multiverse. In this way, all origin questions are answered to, by pointing to the huge number of possible universes and saying that some of them have the properties that allow the existence of life just by chance. Have you ever heard a less rational argument than that? First, one hypothesizes that there are all of these, multi these, all of these universes, yes? And uh, here we are, we're in one of them, and there's life here, so uh, obviously chance uh, would make this possible out of the total number of hypothesized universes. There's not a particle of evidence that any other universe exists, for goodness sake, and so the major premise of the syllogism uh, is invalid, and the result is nonsense. Ha, ha, ha.